I love being inside of the four circle five freeway in my car doing traffic. Long as I'm not late or have to pee, it's heaven. Just sit there, no moving. Watch the other cars. Complete safe, listen, music, or think my thoughts. This is a picture of me uh, talking to the phone to my mom. Hi, mom. How are you? You had a lunch? Chili bueno? I speak to my mother at least two or three times every day until she tells me that she uh, really has to get off the phone now. Okay, I love you, Mommy. Thank you, you have a wonderful day too. Okay, All right, bye. I remember wanting desperately love from my mother. I was a strange kid. I had so many phobia touching people close to me. I was afraid other people, cooties, would get on me. I was terribly afraid my cooties would get someone else. I thought skin is very frightening. Afraid my poison would come off on someone I touch and make them sick. And maybe, maybe they could die. Sometimes I cannot help myself to hudging someone I love. But I always, in the back of my mind, worrying if I am hurting them or sick them, making them sick. I felt mother was only person, no cooties, and wanted so much love from her. My mother was in black and white in my memory, partly because of the smoke from her cigarette. I remember my father in color, pink. <laughs> my father was pink and sometimes he was red. My memories of my dad were really wanting to be the best kid for him. And that was a difficult thing because he was, I don't think so happy ever with me. I remember him quite ang angry me a lot. When he was angry, he would louder his sound and say I am do something to purposely disappoint him. He wasn't a big hitting dad. He was more rough you, push you the wall and 
squeeze me too hard. <laughs> Try to show me lots of love by squeezing me so hard I cannot breathe. <laughs> He did not understand why am I screaming and cry for him to let go. My mother gave me an envelope with child drawings. I don't remember drawing it, but it's of an angry man with his pants unzipped in a gigantic erection, yelling and pointing at a little child who is I believe me. I don't know exactly what happened to me, but I know as inappropriate as my dad could be, he could never do something uh, this terrible. Before I take my pills, I have to just eat something so that I don't throw up my medicine, which yesterday I did. That's gross, sorry. This is symbolic for depression and anxiety. This is Prozac for helping my OCD. Diazepam, which is Valium for anxiety and everything else is for how bad the medicine makes my digestion and tummach. The blue one is the night time and the clear one is the morning. And I can see that I have switched to them twice because they're two extra night times and circle extra. Uh, <laughs> the nighttime medication um, this is called Pamelor, and this is to prevent migraines. Um, this one is Zyprexa, and um, that's most powerful when I take antipsychotic. Uh, makes me uh, fat. I would probably be a uh, vegetable without it. Um, cholesterol. This is a mood stabilizer, Remictol. And then the stomach ones again. According my father and mother, I was drawing since I can hold a pen. It was way I relieved my constant anxiety. Most the time I made my art to give people so that it would give me some love from them. <laughs> I think I used it a lot to impress people because I didn't feel I could impress any other way. And when I am four or five, my mother found me a, a wonderful teacher named Dorothy Cannon. Somehow I was able to find a woman who was just extraordinary. I remember first day met Dorothy. I thought she was magician because she knew my name. She said, hi, Mindy. And I thought, how is this even possible? I learned how to paper mache and all kind of wonderful things. I remember her take my little hands and Together we made masks. When her hands were with my hands, it was so much love. She was very much like a mother me. When I was four circle old, I was hold her hand in the hot pistol as she passed away. She was a very loving person, 
wanted us to be free, much like my teacher Tom now wants us to feel free to doing anything we want. When I came first to Tom, I was pretty much a basket case. I was barely able to speak to him. I was extremely depressed. I had a show coming up and I was terrified and I had no connection to my creativity. I didn't think I had any creativity in me anymore. Tom promised me that we are creativity itself and that he could help me to find that in myself again. And he would like to do that for no charge. When someone calls me and when they walk through that door, I take them seriously as a creative individual. And to them, that's a new experience because that's a part of themselves that they never knew existed or has been dormant. And as we work together, it slowly reveals itself. That's what is being called transformative. When in fact, it's just the lifting of the veil of something that's always been there. I continue after all this time to be given a college ship by him. It's one of the most amazing gifts anyone has ever given me. When I was one six, sick as teen, everything for me started getting worse. My father and I were fighting all the time. It seemed to me that whenever he saw me, he would start to yell. I just infuriated did him. He saw her being helpless, not being able to care for herself. And I think he thought that that, that was deliberate, was something that she could, she could help, that she could do something about. My mother didn't. Uh, step in between us. Possible she was afraid of him. Possible she did not have those natural mother feeling of protecting your children. And at one point it just became so bad uh, between us. My mother came to me and said, I think you should leave. So I, I did. I wasn't sure that she would ever speak to me again. She went for years not speaking to us. I really didn't understand why did she ask me to go instead of him. I think I believed then that then the anger would also be turned on me and I didn't have the equipment to do battle, to be able to hold up my end of an argument. I always believed that Leonard ruled the house, ruled the family, and that I had to do whatever I did in spite of his ruling the house and the family. He could talk about mental illness, but I don't think, in fact, he ever believed in it. Or maybe he believed in it for somebody else, but not for his daughter. But he, he also loved her for who she was. He loved her, and you probably have heard the message that he left her. Hello, Mindy, it's me, Leonard. I happened to talk to your dad yesterday, who so didn't have a chance to talk to you. And he told me that he is so proud of you. He loves you so much, and he's so happy that you are his child. He can't wait to see you and hug you again. So I thought I'd let you know. Bye. I think he spoke in third person, one, because 
he was trying to be funny. Uh, mm, and two, because he was uncomfortable saying, I'm proud of you and I'm really happy. I'm your dad. I'm your dad. But he, I hear from people now that he told them, other people, he was proud of me a lot. He just couldn't say it to me. It is completely overwhelming me to go somewhere busy and noisy. To go to the supermarket, I used to have to walk man my ears just because it was so frightening. Sometimes I've gone in and can't take enough time to get what I need. Nightmare is Costco. I become very anxious. The ceiling is so high. Things start to closing in on me. My eyes are going all over the place, trying to find something, but I don't know what. I panic. When I was one nine old, I realized in my mind something really terrible happened when I am uh, a baby and I knew my mother knew the answer. She said, when my brother Andy born, she had a physical repulsion uh, to me. And when I come near her or touch her, made her skin crawl. And I say, did it lasting approximate 10, 12 uh, times around the sun? And she think it did, yes. I was experiencing these negative feelings about t touching Mindy. And I knew that it was somehow associated with having just had a baby. I knew that I had to do everything possible to not let this run off onto her. But she was aware of it anyway. No matter what I tried to do or not do, she was sensitive and knew that something had happened between her and her mother. She was afraid to tell me, understandably. She thought I would uh, jumping out the window. Uh, I think it was very brave her to telling me that. And I tried to comforting her. So I think a combination of my mother forayed to touching me and my father too much touch is a difficult combination. Not doing too well. <laughs> I'm not remembering things in order. Uh, for the last couple of mo months, I've been having some pretty bad, pretty bad problems. I wasn't feeling too well on my old medication. And uh, we talked to that medication, which really made things even worse. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to go back, back on it, but I've been through several different medications and with all kinds of side effects, and I was having some hallucinations. Yeah. 
I would wake up in the morning and I would just hear all the towns of the city screaming in my ears. I would hear airplanes, children screaming, haunting homes, and terrible things happening to people. And I would see people stuck in pale green glass. And I really thought it was real. This is a really hard and depressing trying time, but uh, it's really not nearly as bad as times as I've had before. And uh, where I've ended up with a hot pistol and suicidal times ago. I was two, seven old, and that's when I completely fell apart and had no speech at all, not any ability to write or think words. I just started to lose control of my body. I had had a nervose breakdown and okay. I was hospitalized in a mental hospital. The doctor there said, don't worry, we will find the rock in your head. So I was terrified because I thought that there was some gigantic tumor going on my brain. I really had a lot of trouble finding woods if I saw a chair, I knew what it was, but I didn't know the name for it. My friends made a list of words for me, and I could point to the words. And then it evolved into cutting up the words. And then eventually I built a box inside of an old slide box. Some were descriptive words. Some were swear words, which were necessary. <laughs> and then some were just abstract ideas. I was very prolific with my drawing. And I think that I was telling more complete stories, maybe because I so desperately was trying to communicate. I didn't, on and off, able to speak for approximately 10 times around the sun. In 1994, I was given shock treatments. I was extremely suicidal, and the medication wasn't working. Nothing seemed to be helping, and I understood that could be an option, and I begged my doctors to please try that. When I first realize that I'm experiencing depression, I have trouble to move my body. I don't want to speak to anyone. I don't have the energy to listen to music. Usually, I just sit and stare at nothing. All the possibilities of life are gone, and I feel my future is very dark and bleak. It's just sitting in a puddle of crying, <laughs> not for sadness, but just because the exhaustion of it. I see other people being happy, I don't understand at all. How do they do that? To me, depression is just gray.
I remember being sedated and counting back from one circle, circle. It did cause some permanent damage to my brain. But I do also think it may have uh, saved me. And I was trying to think, who could I spend that much time focusing on and really want to be with their face? And it was obviously my doctor, Shoshana. It was a really difficult project because it was very hard for me to see her really because my feelings are so big. Before Shoshana, I was a complete mess. I was terrified of everyone. I hated myself. I blamed everyone for being rotten to me. No matter what craziness was happening around me or in me, there was this one person always on my side, Shoshana. I used to call her all the time because I couldn't match it through a day without needing reassurance or, you know, panicking about something. And uh, 26 yards is a long time and you have to grow up. <laughs> and she's been with me while I've been growing up. So this is a day that we've all been waiting for, right? And maybe you could tell us a little bit about the challenges. Okay. I had to give up all my ideas. I had in my head what I imagined it would supposed to look like and finally let the culture guide me with Tom's help to be it, become itself. But even with all of Tom's help, what I feel I didn't accomplish is to capture her uh, how I feel about her, my heart, my heart, and her heart, her compact, her compassion. There is a lot of sensitivity here, and also a kind of identification with your struggle that, that I can see in those eyes. But more than anything, I see a statement of authority. When Mindy first came here, she was incapable of coming to lunch, let alone even having any contact with the other students. And she would have to apologize every 10 seconds because she couldn't even communicate with me. Everything I'm always talking about here, about creativity, and how it can really have a redemptive capacity if one acknowledges it and commits to it is true over here with this work. I mean, I know just the difference between everyone being so patient with me and now I feel like I can be friends with all the people here who I didn't deserve that before. So. Well, what makes you think you deserve it now? <laughs> That's kind of arrogant and <laughs> presumptuous. And now I'm too big of a snob to come to lunch anyway. That's right. <laughs> Finally, the truth comes out. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.
when they were bringing my things out of the truck, I was so embarrassed because my pieces were coming out in front of people and I wanted no one to see how horrible these things were. The current work is basically paper mache, which she has done for many, many years since she was a child. She told me that she has the favorite newspapers that she likes to work with. She doesn't like the quality of the paper that the LA Times is printed on. She prefers the quality of the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. She does use color, but dependent upon the printed color used in the newspapers. And so she uses that very skillfully. I feel very overwhelmed. Yeah. Definitely don't deserve all this. After I finished building the last sculpture and looked around the way Rosamond and I had planned everything, I saw my pieces for the first time with space around them. And I actually was quite moved. They became their own life, and they related to each other, and they weren't so bad. In the morning, I took my time before I went over to be with people, because it was going to be a big deal for me. So I had to really be alone to get ready. I threw up in the morning, but from my headache and not from nerves, I'm only getting spilkless now. I just told people I like my work. Of course, all my friends have seen it already for years. I'm bored of it. As it turns out, a lot of people came. I couldn't believe all of this is happening because of something I did. Hi, Tom. Hey, how are you? I'm all right. Oh, See you. Congratulations. <laughs> so, Shana had to come early to the show. She offered, and I said, yes, please. I was terrified for her to come into the gallery for the first time and see the sculpture of her. I thought for sure she wouldn't like it and she would see I didn't do a good job of capturing her. But she thought it was really beautiful and exuded so much love and compassion. It made her feel too tears to think about it. And she wasn't sure she deserved or could live up to the feelings that the culture brought, brought out. These pieces are so powerful. Those faces, the sensitivity in the faces, the fact that she's gotten so much expression in people's eyes and it's not just wire and paper, they're people. There were a lot of times, many, many times in my life where I felt very isolation and alone. And to be the center of so much attention was overwhelming. It was really nice to get that much love and atten attention from people. It was really, really nice. I tried to enjoy it because it may never happen again.
Things with my mother were so complicated. I thought she didn't love me, but she tried so hard to take care of me, give me art lessons, get me into therapy. I really regret not understanding how much she loved me. It is almost six years after my father died, and I was talking to my mom, and I said, you know, when I talk to you about him, I kind of miss, miss him and think of some good times we had. And she said, but you don't miss him ne really now, do you? And I said, no, I'm glad it's over. It has been a very rough several months. I do feel like I'm coming out of it. Medication till isn't right. Uh, but I am feeling much more hopeful. I'd like to have a dog and a cat. I'd like to have my own place to live. I'd like to have a partner um, who lives next door. I wish to keep all my friends I love so much. I wish to be able to express myself when I need to. I wish to want to make art 